Usually when we talk about the closing of a home, it all centers around the party that is buying, but the house closing process for the seller also has its requirements. For most sellers, it's just a matter of, of signing paperwork, sitting back and waiting for a check. But often sellers are a little bit nervous and apprehensive about what the final closing may bring. Hi, I'm Lisa Kelly, Lakeland Homes and Lifestyles with Premier Realty. Today I'm going to talk about five things that sellers should know on the actual day of closing, plus a little bonus at the end. So let's get started. One question I'm often asked at listing time is, does my spouse have to sign if I am the only one on the deed? The answer is yes. The seller's spouse most likely will have to sign, even if there's one spouse listed on the deed. This is because the spouse has a marital interest in the property, and this interest must be dealt with in order to convey the property to the new buyer, unless the seller has some kind of signed release from the spouse or other documentation showing the spouse has been released. The closing agent will have to pay off all liens against the property. We all know if there's a mortgage against the property, that certainly does need to be paid off. But there also may be tax liens or judgments. In addition, you have may have taken out an equity line of credit at some point. This would need to be properly closed out to avoid any future liens after closing. All of these liens would have to be paid in full before or at closing. Your title agent would have performed a title search early in the process to determine what these liens are. They'll ask you for your social security number and your account number so they can obtain the exact payoff of these liens. But don't worry, if you pay anything over at closing, you will definitely get a refund from the lender after closing. Number three, oh, the IRS. The closing agent will have to report the sale to the IRS. You'll be provided a Form 1099-S at closing asking for a forwarding address. At the end of the year, Form 1099-S is transmitted to the IRS showing the full sales price of the property. In most cases, the seller is not going to owe the IRS anything from the sales proceeds. However, you may owe taxes on the proceeds and these are called capital gains. There are several determining factors here. I strongly urge you to get with a tax professional to determine what your tax liability would be based on your particular situation. You don't want any surprises at the end of the year. It's a common misconception that all the parties must sit down at the closing table together to sign. This misnomer often causes a little bit of stress for the seller who may be out of state or even worried about the closing schedule itself. In most cases, parties do prefer to sign separately. Typically, the seller's package is pretty short, but the buyer's package can be very, very long, especially if they're financing. And the buyers may feel a little bit more comfortable with the sellers not being there while their finances are being discussed. Both parties can meet if they want, you know, to discuss things about the house, but there is absolutely no requirement that says that all parties have to sit down at the closing table together at actual closing. Make sure you tell your closing agent how you'd like to receive your proceeds. This can be in form of a check or a wire transfer into the bank of your choice. Now, if your buyer is financing, your proceeds are not going to be dispersed until the buyer's lender has approved all the paperwork. This typically happens all within the same day, uh, especially if the buyer has a morning closing that gives the title company or your closing agent plenty of time to get that paperwork approved and get that wire out before the wired cutoff time. But if you have a cash buyer, your sales proceeds are going to be dispersed right away, provided that all your liens have been satisfied. Like I talked about last week, there are no two closings alike, and we've just touched on the basics here today. The key to a successful closing on a property is to have a seasoned realtor by your side and a clear line of communication with your closing agent. In the description, you'll find a link to my 21-page seller's guide. In it, you're going to find everything you need to know to how to properly prepare your home for sale and have a smooth closing. It's my gift to you for taking the time today to watch this video, so enjoy! Oh, and if you haven't already done so, please hit subscribe and ring the little bell too. I put out a new video every single week and you're not going to want to miss a thing. I'm Lisa Kelly, Lakeland Homes and Lifestyles with Premier Realty, and until then, I'll see you on the next one.